fourth of july uh... we're starting a new series on the money corner tonight by the way if you saw the last money corner and we repeated the program on taxes several times which we did which i know many of you enjoyed because you talked to me about the show when i met you in restaurants and my barber watched it twice it was a good show we had to repeat it several times because the last time we did this program we lost the voice someone forgot to flip a switch so tonight my good friend steve in the control room steve we're all set with the voice right and coming over loud and clear good uh... let me tell you what we're going to try and do tonight and over the next few weeks i've got to the chief operating officer the president and the chairman of the board of a company that in some ways might be identified as a local company they headquarter in newark new jersey conrad incorporated and i'll introduce my guests harry shutt is from Ohokus, harry wyckoff wyckoff I, I keep confusing the two towns harry is president of conrad incorporated and the gentleman, the gentleman next to him is Carl Krieger, who is chairman of the board of, White Cor Correct. of Conrad Incorporated. And Carl is a resident of Paramus. Right. Uh, Conrad is headquartered in Newark, so we have headquartering in Newark with good Bergen County representation in terms of the operating officers of the company. And I believe, fellas, between the two of you, you've got 50 years of longevity in the That's uh, right. company. Um, Harry, before joining Conrad, you were with one of the big eight, an accounting firm. I spent six years with Pete Malik Mitchell uh, in the management consulting practice of the firm. And Carl, you came up kind of as the boy wonder all the way up right from the Well, I started, I started after working in several electronics companies as a packaging engineer and a uh -huh. design engineer. Uh, very briefly, and the purpose of the program is to kind of take the company apart and help you understand how you evaluate a company in terms of making an investment. And I, I know many people do it by trying to read an annual report. But that's not enough. You've really got to get some flavor of the product. You've got to get some flavor of the management. And you can do that by learning to read an annual report more astutely, by going to an annual meeting and questioning the management, and really getting behind the scenes so that, in effect, you become a long-term investor as opposed to a speculator. Uh, I like the investor, and I like the long-term outlook. Fellas, tell me a little about your industry, and tell me a little about your company. What is Conrad, and where is it, and how long has it been around? Canrad is a company that started in 1938, basically as a research and development company. And we work in low-level luminosity. Okay, low-level luminosity. Uh, luminosity must refer to light. Luminosity refers to light, and the levels that we worked with were those levels that were barely discernible to the human eye. And we developed a series of patents through the years, and in 1968, we went public and took the money from the public offering to maximize the so-called black boxes that we had developed over the years. Yeah, you're using, you're using jargon, which is well known. Going public, as most people I'm sure know, means that for the first time you sold stock. That's correct. Uh, approximately 14, 15 years ago, somewhere in that area. Right. It was the last days of 1968. Uh, the last days of that great bull right. market. Because in 1969, that market had gone away, if you remember. Yeah, when, you went, when you went public, what price did the shares come out at? Well, it came out at the equivalent of $12.50. Uh -huh. And we were chatting before the program. You told me now that there, the amount of shares available are comparatively small. That's correct. It's a very small float. Correct. Yeah, the float uh, and I, I don't mean to uh, talk down to anybody in the audience, but the float essentially is the existing supply available for purchase. There is just under one million shares available for purchase, of which half are owned by what is known in the trade as insiders. Those are large block investors, people on the board of directors, and the insiders, so there's like Harry and myself. So there's pro approximately a half million shares available for That's the public correct. to do bit buy and sell or trade in. That's correct. Now, uh, Harry, you're the operating head of the company. That's correct. You're the chief executive officer. Chief uh, operating chief officer. O uh, chief operating officer. Carl is very conversant with the float and the market and the money parts of it. Uh, do you get into that part as well? Are you more of an internal man? How does the president function in your company as opposed to the chairman of the board? Well, I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, from in total, in terms of the financial results, the planning, uh, and the delivery of the product to the customer. Do either of you fellas find the stockholders approach you at all? Yes. We receive, we receive calls. 
continually from interested investors wanting to know about the company i think i should add phil that harry is also very conversant with the financial operation of the company he started with the company as a financial officer and then and then became involved in the operations and worked himself through the operations till he became executive vice president and chief operating officer this may when he was promoted to president and i was promoted to chairman of the board yeah for a comparably small company what is the price of your stock now it's fourteen dollars fourteen dollars and it trades over the counter that's correct uh for a comparatively small company i was impressed by your annual report you spent a lot of money on artwork it really is very handsome it, it's uh certainly comparable to that the kind of annual report published by very large companies we've always had a great difficulty in conveying to the shareholders what the company was involved in it's very difficult to say that we're involved in plasma arc technology okay People, define it for us plasma arc technology essentially is ultraviolet radiation and we supply that ultraviolet radiation in the form of bulbs and you see okay, samples you, you brought a couple of these bulbs our our product line is used in a variety of industries and most of the divisions that we have acquired are vertical integrations using the products that we make in the core business in newark now this is a bulb it's That's not quite like a household bulb no but you you offer bulbs to the film industry or for motion picture projectors correct and uh, i assume a variety of other uses harry certainly for the use of in follow spotlights for the fast drying of printing inks uh, on uh, paper or various substrates for diazo copying the reproduction of uh, engineering copies now what is the uh, you have another you brought another product here what is this used for that's it's a, also a type of bulb that's a module that uh, we produce for general electric it's used as part of their telaria project in large screen picture projection mm -hmm. we electroform the reflectors that comprise the module as well as manufacture the bulb or light source mounted therein. Okay, now fellas, uh, the average investor or the a person who is interested in becoming a stockholder, uh, if they if they come to you and they want to learn about your business, do you essentially have one division or do you run several different kinds of businesses that that are uh, perhaps related and perhaps not related? If you would imagine our business as a horizontal line. Uh -huh. And we start out with a lamp that's approximately this size. A very, very small lamp. Right. And a, a lamp this small is made in the same division or the same yes. plant? Yes, as, 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 as a lamp this size. This is the largest lamp we make. This uh -huh. is a 30-kilowatt lamp. Uh-huh. Now, yeah. as I look at this, it seems to me this, the products look to me to be very sophisticated. They is are, that a fair word? They are very sophisticated. Uh -huh. They're highly technical. And, and quality control is a very important part of your business. Yes, it's become the keynote of our business. Uh -huh. Quality, the quality product delivered to the customer on time in accordance with the specifications of the customer. Now, if you take that horizontal line and take each of the products that we have brought and make that a point on that line, several of the visions that we have are vertical integrations of that those product lines. Our motion picture lamp house business takes a lamp similar to this lamp, puts it in a lamp house, directs it through an optical track, through a projector, onto the screen, and you then see the film. Can you show it to me? Um, sure. This is, this is for a small projector. Uh -huh. That would be a 700 watt lamp, and it will go into a small projector that would serve as a small movie house. And on the side, I don't want to cue your show, Phil, but there is a picture of a lamp house and a motion picture projector into which this bulb would go. Now wait. That's this, the one. That's, that's right. the one? Right. So that, let's see that little lamp. This, this little lamp. lamp would go into this projector. Yes, it would fit into the lamp house at the top uh -huh. of the picture further up. Now, who, uh, who would be the manufacturer of a projector like this? We manufacture all of those things in our Ballantyne Everything division. Everything in, in this picture is manufactured we, by you? Yes, and we manufacture it in Omaha. Uh -huh. We make the motion picture projector that's on the front. Well, how much is equipment like this worth? Harry? It sells on the order of $15,000 uh, for the whole total piece of equipment. Total and system. How much would, what would a bulb like this cost? It could be on the order of $250. 
So what is the way up all the way up to three thousand dollars? Well, who would possibly use a bulb this big? It looks like it's something you use in the space program. Well, it is used in a space program. Matter of fact, used by Jet Propulsion Laboratories. Uh -huh. They have a solar simulator has 37 of those lamps in the simulator. They provide 11 solar constants. A solar constant is the radiation that the sun gives off in the atmosphere. A satellite that, fly, that flies in the atmosphere is subjected to five solar constants. Every piece of space hardware that we have sent into orbit has gone through the Jet Propulsion Laboratories to see the effects of solar radiation on the satellite before it's been launched. Fellas, my assumption is that if an investor comes to you, that one of the things the investor would be impressed by would be the customer list, the client list that you have. Uh, and, and my expectation is that if your equipment really is, is of very high quality, which I, and I don't doubt that, I'm sure it is, that your customers would be very demanding. Now, is your customer list an, uh, an example of, of the quality of your company? I know I we sound like a straight man, and I, I am sure. performing that function. But I mean it very simply as I think a good question for an investor to ask of a prospective company that they're going to buy stock in. Yes, we believe that, that uh, our customer list is very representative of the quality of our product. We provide uh, a lamp used in the tow missile to Hughes Aircraft. Mm -hmm. We're the uh, sole source for that uh, lamp. Is that the lamp, Carl? That's the lamp. So a product like this is bought by Hughes Aircraft? That's right. Uh -huh. For use in the tow missile, which is an anti-tank weapon, and uh, we supply something on the order of twenty to 24,000 of those light sources to them a year. So you, it's not unusual for you to deal with Fortune 500 companies? We've no. been invited to the um, acceptance of the 400,000th missile by the government in, in August. This is a fly-to-buy missile, Phil. We take a lot of these lamps. We do a quality control check. Hughes Aircraft comes and selects a representative sample. They fire the lamps. We have a certain radiometer check where we check the output and the directional output of the lamp. We then integrate it into a formula. If those samples are accepted by Hughes, they buy the lot. If not, we have a lot of rejects. Mm -hmm. Over the 400,000 lamps we've made, we have never lost a lot. And I think that's typical of the quality of the products we make in all of our divisions. Quality control is something you really preach. And this is a lamp that we've been delivering to Hughes uh, since 1971. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I, um, uh, an investor falls into several different categories. Some investors will come in and buy dividend paying stocks like public utilities. Particularly in our area, we have investors who are enamored of a public service, which has been a marvelous investor for most, a mar marvelous investment for most Jerseyites. Um, a company like yours at the moment, my expectation is does not pay dividends. Am I correct in that? That's correct. You pay no dividends. In effect then, the rationale for buying your stock would be that you consider yourself a growth company. Is right. that fair or not? That's fair, Phil. Uh -huh. and, and I think you have to make, also make the assumption that if a company is paying dividends, they feel that the level of growth has tapered off and to attract the investors and make it interesting for him to put his money into that stock, he's going to receive a return on the money. We feel that we're a growth company and we have a long way to go. And as evidenced by the last several quarters of our earnings, you can see that pattern established. Mm -hmm. What is the size of the company now? This is all in your annual report, so I'm not asking you for tales out of school. We, uh, in 1985, did approximately $30 million in sales. We employ around 475 uh, people amongst our four divisions. And uh, this year, we're going at the rate of uh, about $36 million in sales. So you will be up from 30 to $36 million in sales? Yes. Do you find a commensurate increase in profits as well? We are seeing that right now, yes. Last year we earned 81 cents a share. Uh, in the first quarter of this year we produced 32 cents. So the quarter by quarter comparison looks very good. Extremely. We're going to pause for a commercial for just a short period of time. Stay with us. I'll try to show you more about Conrad as a company, but also really try to give you some insights or some techniques for becoming a smarter investor. I'll be back in just a moment.
thank you for staying with us just by way of review and perhaps for some of you just tuned in my guest tonight are harry shut from a focus from what i cough i got a metal block on a tab and call krieger from a paramus harry is president of a company in newark newark new jersey conrad and call krieger is chairman of the board of that company i really invited both gentlemen to be with me tonight because i i'm hoping to give you some uh, suggestions in terms of how to do some research when you're about to buy a stock. I, I really, I, I've been a stockbroker 25 years and I, I think this thing of getting a tip from your Uncle Charlie or from your shoeshine boy or whoever you get tips from is probably the worst way to build a, an investment portfolio where you usually find skeletons along the road of unsuccessful investors. But there are techniques like finding a reputable company, looking at the quality of the product, looking at the quality of the management, and these are the kinds of things that I'm trying to bring out in this interview tonight. Uh, by way, I'm somewhat repetitious, but both you gentlemen now represent 50 years of experience with your company. So the longevity of management is one test of the character of the company. Uh, the quality control of the product is another test of the company. The customer list of who they sell to. Harry and Carl just mentioned that they sell to many companies who are Fortune 500 companies, use tool, Carl, I think one day you told me you sell, one of your subsidiaries sells to American Telephone. We sell to AT&T. We sell to General Electric, Hughes Aircraft, many of the large chemical companies, the largest graphic arts people in, in the world in the reproduction business for blueprints. Uh, we sell to Technicon. So it's, it's a division of the Johnson & Johnson. Now, yes. And then I, I understand you're beaming with pride you got a very prestigious award recently right we were selected as a subcontractor of the year for region two which is this immediate area new york new jersey um, puerto rico and the virgin islands we were nominated by hughes aircraft as a quality supplier hughes had two winners we were one of the two winners and we were very proud That's to marvelous. accept the award and you went to washington to accept the award right and in newark um senator lautenberg presented us with a very large plaque and it was a very good day for us. You're located in, in Down Neck in Newark, I believe. In the Ironbound section of Newark, uh -huh. yes. That's great. Uh, you brought a, a whole slew. A call came in loaded with bear. He had bulbs and lamps and a nice shave bag. I, I was kind of concerned about what he would put out of there. Uh, you brought a, some represent, representative product. And for example, you've got a Tropicana can, a Tropicana can in your attache bag. Why? I didn't know you were in the orange juice business. You told me you're a conglomerate, but... Well, one of the products that we make in Newark, our ultraviolet lamp, is used in the curing of the printing of that can. Uh -huh. This bulb, which is a linear lamp, as opposed to a compact arc lamp, is mounted in a fixture, and in our annual report is a picture of a system that we built for Tropicana to cure the paint on that can. And, and I, don't, I don't quite remember how many, maybe Harry does, how many they cure in a day. Something close to a million and a half cans in the course of uh, a 16 hour run. Help our viewer understand something. In effect, what your company would do, Tropicana has a problem. You've got the expertise to help sort, work on that problem. You'll sell, send a design engineer or creative engineer into their plant, watch their operation, and see if you can develop a process that right. they can utilize, and in effect, you generate or create business for yourself well, that way. Our idea, our idea of business is to manufacture what's known in the trade as a razor blade, and then make the razors to use the razor blade. So while we'll make that lamp, which will be a replacement product, we'll build the whole piece of equipment that will use that lamp. We'll build the reflector, the lamp, the power supply, the control system, and the mechanical lash up to pick those cans up, rotate the cans after they're printed, and dried using our bulbs and reflectors. Harry, I want you to tell me a little more about the finances of the company, but before I ask you that question, you, you brought some very nice visuals. I, I'm very pleased. You help us have a more creative kind of program. Why don't you tell us about this process? That's a, uh, a picture taken in our uh, colite operation in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're, those uh, machines are photo exposure equipment used to produce uh, printed circuit boards. We sell those to uh, various companies involved with the manufacture of printed circuit boards. And how does that fit in to the glass technology or to the bulb, the light technology? The machines use light sources or bulbs that we manufacture in our Newark operation along with power supplies that we also manufacture there. 
are how many divisions are there in the company or how many come uh, component businesses are there because Carl at one point you gave me a, uh, an impression that you were somewhat like a conglomerate and I, I don't have that impression tonight you do not have the differing uh, widely differing businesses well as I explained as I explained before if you take our product line in Newark and imagine that as a horizontal line our strong and Ballantine division in Omaha manufactures motion picture projectors and the products that we mentioned, which uses the lamps that we make. Sure, that fits into the glass. But they make all the rest of the mechanical lash up. They do the design and put and assemble the pro some of the product we make in Newark with the product they manufacture in Omaha. And in Colite, as Harry explained to you, they design and manufacture the equipment that was in that photograph. We send them the power supply and the bulb. Now, in Binghamton, we have a division that manufactures microwave equipment, which is not related to anything else we do. It's the beginning of another core business. And in our future plans and our strategic planning is a program to add to that and expand that microwave technology that we have in that business. Yeah, but isn't that, and I'm being devil's advocate now, I'm not sure. questioning your, your infinite wisdom, isn't that uh, a digression which kind of diverts? Uh, shouldn't expansion be the basic bulb, the basic light? Uh, you're getting off into a new area now in Binghamton. Now. Yes, Phil, but what we, what we have developed is a set of acquisition criteria. It's not a criteria that's not so different than an investor would look at in terms yeah, of an quickly acquire. Quickly, criteria, A, B, C, D, E. Should, should be a product related to something we do, some vertical integration, something to make the next biggest assembly, the next biggest okay, assembly. Okay, it should be sold, if it doesn't do that, it should be sold to the same market so okay. that our sales force could be used. The manufacturing technology should be similar to ours so that we can learn something. The management should stay with the company. It should be profitable. And if it doesn't fit any of those things, it should be, make sense from a financial point of view and provide us with a core business that we could expand into another group like the ones we've established with Ballantyne and Colite. Harry, before becoming president of Conrad, you were with uh, one of the big eight, one of the accounting firms, Pete Marwick and Mitchell. Prior to joining Conrad in right. 1970. And, and you worked with other companies in terms of cost controls and cost analysis. Um, is Can Conrad doing the kind of job that Carl just enumerated in terms of the cost controls and the profitability Certainly. and diverse units? Carl and I worked very closely together over the over the uh, years since uh, 1970 to develop uh, good internal controls and uh, to get a handle on the financial aspects of our business so that uh, we know where we're going and we can uh, give, provide the guidance to accomplish our objectives. I know that, I know that an, the average investor can't really get into this kind of depth of, of, of questioning but your ability to develop and implement those financial controls are vital and crucial towards a control on earnings per share and earnings growth of the company. So in one sense, Harry, you're a very important arm of the investor in terms of carrying out your mission of making the company grow from a financial point of view or a profitability point of view, so adding to the equity of the investor. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm kind of leading you but I assume you could show me how you can implement that kind of mission or how you carry out that kind of mission, both in terms of your past experience and being the operating officer. What, uh, what we seek to do is to be on top of the things that are happening in the company so that we can eliminate the surprises. And you're on top from Newark, New Jersey. We you're believe about we're on top of, talking about things all of our operations, yes. We've worked hard to develop a, a group of people within each of our divisions so that they can operate on a standalone basis and produce results on a daily, weekly, or timely basis. Yeah, but how fast can the data come into Newark, New Jersey? It can come in just as fast as a telephone call will bring it. Then I would think that you've got kinds of standardized reporting forms or standardized communications that are diagnostic in nature. Yes, we watch the daily collection of cash, our shipments, our uh, incoming orders, and uh, we have targets or objectives set for each of those at the beginning of the period by the uh, divisions, and we monitor their progress on accomplishment. Does the company have any debt? Yes, we do. How much debt? We have $6 million, just shy of $6 million in debt, most of that used to make the last two acquisitions 
that we made and provide the operating capital for those that debt is long term bonds or insurance company loan no their short term their short term debt with a with a bank line of credit from a bank right uh huh and I assume I would think you're a rather healthy wealthy little company I would assume your assets to liability are a very uh, good ratio oh Carl's got a grin on his face <laughs> that was the right question Harry in excess me. of three to one three to one now the normal ratio that you look at and perhaps someday I'll do a program on the standard poor stock guide the normal ratio you look at of liabilities to assets if a company's got a two to one ratio that company is acceptable in terms of financial health three to one ratio of assets to liabilities is very very admirable well I would say admirable it, it's very good and most companies like uh, Conrad that are well run try to run with very conservative accounting ratios Harry would you like to comment on that or we believe that uh, we have a strong balance sheet and that we follow uh, very conservative approach to uh, our accounting once again the, without talking down the, the strong balance sheet is the tum sum summation of all the assets of the company and um, I, I might offer something for nothing tonight on the program I have a very simple book that Merrill Lynch put out many years ago how to read a financial statement and I'd be delighted to mail that to you and it's very very important because then you won't be taking tips you'll be doing some sound analysis if you write to me here at the money corner give me your name and address I'll mail you a copy of how to read a financial statement it really is good basic education for an investor and it'll help you develop a good portfolio Carl I cut you off you were about to say something I was going to say that Harry is very shy about saying the things that he should say about yeah, I would himself. like to bring these things out um, in most companies the reporting of the month's history it really is a history lesson and you receive that history late in the month too late to help yourself Harry has developed a system where within five working days we have closed for the prior month we're usually the first one of the first companies that reports each quarter's earnings and by the end of January we have closed our books for the year and have been signed off by Pete Marwick and we publish our earnings in the paper that we think that that's a very necessary thing to continually monitor the health of the company 40 days after the end of the month it's history and it's no, no concern to us now fellas um, your stock is traded over the counter uh, being a stock over the counter uh, and I'm not sure of the SEC rules I know listed companies must publish quarterly reports uh, an over-the-counter company must yes. pu publish quarter the and you mail rules. your quarterly reports to all stockholders yep is that right yes, we yes. we're fully filed Phil we filed 10 Q's and the 10 K's and the, the other documents where we have special events just like a national company where do you hold your annual meeting in Newark in Newark yeah. at the plant no we've typically used a bank in the past uh-huh do the stockholders come out for your annual meeting we, we usually have been inundated with we usually have two or three right. yeah. and mostly they're analysts who come uh -huh. to ask questions yeah. but we do receive many questions on the on the telephone and we take a lot of time to try to explain to our shareholders the purpose of this year's annual report was to enable the shareholder to understand what the end product was from the technology that yeah. we have developed I, I think it's a real problem I, I enjoyed doing this program tonight and I think it's a real problem so many products have become so exotic that people really can't get a feel for a company anymore. We know what Kellogg's cereal is. We can measure that or we can measure Colgate's toothpaste. But when you get in the world of technology, boy, you really can get lost. And in some ways, investors pass up very, very fine little companies. And I'm very impressed by what you've told me. Well, tonight. we consider ourselves to be a medium technology company. We don't have anything that's terribly esoteric, but we have good sound physics principles that we employ in the optics design of the product well one of the things we don't have is time we're out of it we've hit the end of the show thank you for being with me perhaps some point I'll get Carl and Harry back again and talk to you more about their company I hope you learned something I'll be back with you again next week on the money corner good night